everyone, I'm Savannah and I'm Alice and today's episode of Soka with Sav and Alice uh, <laughs> is, um, is week six and so we're just going to jump straight into the discussion board questions um, and yeah I was really excited to do these questions. I'm talking about how did the Aboriginal uh, ways of eating relate to the overall functioning in society and what did colonization mean for Aboriginal food ways and so um, the traditional Aboriginal way of eating before colonialism was just so different to modern Western diet and it was a time before industrialization and so basically the Aboriginals were so connected to the land it was very much um, part of their spirituality and um, the land was really seen as a provider and so it was really um, shared between the com between people and they were it was not exploited in any way um, as opposed to like modern industry. It was a provided to be shared by people. Resources um, were preserved by the, the Aboriginals wouldn't consume too much of any one thing. They yeah. were nomadic so that they, they would move around and wherever they were, they would hunt and gather um, and only really eat, for example, the edible portions of plants so they weren't being pulled out of the ground. Um, and all of these... Um, aspects were also really tied closely to their sort of societal roles that the men would be the hunter gatherers and maybe the women would do like the fishing or the weaving um, and yeah the land was really respected in that sense yeah. because it was also very like it was tied to their ancestors as well um, and so all of this was completely overthrown with colonialism uh, sorry colonization where um, you know westerners came in and made land was changed to being private property and so um there was many many cases of traditional owners who can't get like custody of the land and yeah. back in those days <clears throat> it meant that they were trespassing and they couldn't even hunt and gather um and yeah the food resources had to be shared and was exploited with agriculture mm. and yeah it was really a loss of the traditional diet um for the aboriginals and yeah as the food profile of australia has changed in the last 200 years as well um yeah the traditional diet has really been lost western diet has come in with more processed foods higher in fat higher in sugar um in week 10 video we talk about um well alice yeah. talks about how oh do you want to explain yeah um just the correlation i guess between that huge change um in diet and mm -hmm. how there's like a effectively a direct correlation between change in diet and all of this increased um risk profile for like cardiovascular yeah. disease and diabetes, yeah. poor blood lipids, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, skip ahead to week 10 to hear more about that and mm -hmm. um, the benefits that can happen when you put Indigenous Australians back on a diet yeah. diet um, that is much more reflective of a traditional yeah. traditional diet. Yeah. yeah. Since colonialization has occurred and more and more uh, Western diet has been pushed in Australia. I guess when we come to modern times now, we've got even more influences from different countries and cultures, globalization, cultural globalization of the food mm. um, in our country. So I think you were you yeah, a point I'm to make there. Yes, yeah, so I was talking a bit more about um, like multiculturalism in Australia and how um, that's really led to a diverse and delicious. Uh, food system in this mm. country and that's something that I think about a lot when I think about food in Australia mm. I think I said it in a video a couple of weeks ago weeks ago um, about um, food and multiculturalism and how when I think of the food it's all about how diverse it is yeah. um, and so food as we have learned throughout this whole course is inherently tied to culture mm. um, as more people move to Australia and they like they bring their culture, they bring their food knowledge with them. Yeah. Um and they often you see like the establishment of like really small grocery stores where you know they'll like import um foods from their countries, they'll start up like yeah. restaurants and like so so that maybe to like um target like a specific immigrant group as well to yeah, like, yeah. Oh, the the Korean shop down the road. Yeah, because yeah. often you find like people move to if people are coming from a specific culture or a specific, specific country, they, there tends to be regions where yeah. they will, like, yeah. um, Just a move. Bit different suburbs in Sydney. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Sydney, I think, is, like, an excellent example. Like, yeah. you're, like, skip and you're less, like, every restaurant here is a Korean restaurant. Yeah. Like, every restaurant here is, like... Lebanese. Lebanese, or, yeah. yeah. Um, and then as this kind of happens, people start 
other people become interested and mm. start eating the food and it becomes more wide, widespread. Mm. Um, and so I think national cuisines are a way of staying connected to your culture, to your country, yep. to your history, um, even as immigration has led to, like, diasporic cultures. So, but you can now effectively mm. go to any kind of multicultural country and be able to find remnants of yep. almost every country yep. on earth somewhere reflected in food yeah um and i guess in australia a lot of that food gets gets modified i always think of like chinese or indian food and, like butter chicken and like an indian person might be like uh yeah that's like not anything. australian butter chicken yeah, yeah sure. australian butter chicken yeah um to make those foods i guess like less foreign maybe more palatable to people who have no experience with like those kinds of tastes mm. um and i think as those foods do become more popular within the general population, you see them moving out of, like, these special convenience stores and into supermarkets. Yeah. So you go into Coles and Woolworths now. There's whole sections for Asian food. Yeah. You can buy all of, like, the curry paste yeah. and, and um, all, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I think they, there's a big market, obviously, for that as well in Australia um, that separates some of that food from culture. Actually, we talked about it, I guess. Yeah the week before less scary i suppose like you yeah can, you yeah. can try this yeah yeah, yeah you, you too can try mm. this that's not spicy mm. um yeah i think i just wanted to end this one on to paraphrase the textbook and it says the ubiquity of the jar of vegemite in australian cupboards or the capacity to eat it straight from the jar makes it typically australian and that made me laugh because I was like, I don't know a single person in Australia who eats Vegemite straight from the jar unless it's a prank on I someone. Don't, I do not eat Vegemite. I do not like Vegemite. I don't even look at it. It's just... <laughs> I like I must Vegemite. be un-Australian then because... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's a wrap for week six. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And you don't have to subscribe, but do comment. <laughs> I'd like that. <laughs> All right, see ya.